I'm going to do a short video about the turbo failure I've had on my uh, 1HDT engined Land Cruiser 80 series. Um, I'm going to mention at first this this vehicle is religiously serviced. It uh, has a nice semi-synth oil in it every 4,000 miles, fresh filters and so on. It's not a service issue with this, I don't believe. Um, it is may well be something to do with the fact that it's done 280,000 miles um, and I think it was probably just its time. As you can see here, the vehicle was uh, had to be recovered, it broke down on the side of the road. The turbo failure was actually quite severe, there was a very loud bang, um, loads and loads of grey smoke, and the engine wouldn't actually stop, it was running on its own oil. Um, so managed to pull over and part the nose of the vehicle against a tree, didn't take it out of gear, stuffed the uh, sleeve of my fleece up into the air intake to choke it off. It was only running for a couple of minutes while I was doing this, but unfortunately I think it was long enough. Um, it was running long enough to, uh, I think, cause some engine damage. So, having got it home, I essentially pulled the uh, air intake, or the air transfer pipe off, from between the turbo outlet and the intake manifold. Um, the engine, obviously, at this stage would start and run. Um, it didn't sound too bad, um, so I shall let you listen to it here. at this stage throwing out an awful lot of uh, smoking and there still so uh, I thought that was just oil um, residual oil left in it um, but apparently it was a little more than that interestingly while it was in this state you could still hear the turbo running quite happily as it turned out this is just the turbine side um, of the turbo spinning in the exhaust gases the actual core of the turbo wasn't too badly damaged Having pulled the uh, inlet feed um, pipe off, you can see that there was just oil everywhere. Um, it had man just managed to get completely and utterly soaked. It just escaped from the bearings. And a view down um, onto the turbo itself with the inlet removed, again oil leaking everywhere. Looking down into the compressor housing, you can see again um, it's uh, looking a bit miserable and horrible in there, um, still a pool of oil down the bottom but again nothing, no no turbine blades that I could see um, they're all, everything seemed clear um, you can see down the front that the turbine had actually impacted with the side of the housing um, and so it was completely and utterly shot um, but I couldn't see anything in there also having had a boroscope down there there was nothing particularly bad that I could find wedged in the inlet manifold so the first step was to actually remove the exhaust manifold and the turbo assembly. Um, 12 bolts hold the manifold on, another two hold the turbo to the side of the block, undo the exhaust, um, undo all of those bolts, and the whole assembly lifts off. Um, you can see here that again, oil is everywhere, um, but the, the whole thing you know, was structurally intact, uh, it's just the internals that had gone a bit wrong. When you look down the inlet of the turbo though, you can see that it was uh, quite clearly um, a catastrophic failure there. The entire end of the compressor wheel is just off axis. Um, it is completely shot. However, when you look at the exhaust side, um, it looks absolutely fine. Um, so it was actually just the compressor wheel end that sheared off. Um, so cleaned it up a bit, um, had a look round. Um, nothing, no, no particular damage to the housings. So I think that the actual tur turbo itself was salvageable. Um, so that was sent off to, to be repaired. Moving on with this then, um, this is a shot with the uh, manifold removed. You can see the amount of oil that had obviously gone through the engine, there's still oil in the inlet manifold there slightly. I figured it was worth running it with all of the manifold off so that we could see what was going on with it and if any particular cylinder was misbehaving given the amount of grey smoke that was coming out of the exhaust. So on starting it up, it ended up Missing slightly, there was a there was a bit of a wobble from the engine. It didn't sound, it didn't wasn't as smooth as it used to be, so that got me wondering. As you rev the engine, it really does start chucking out an awful lot of smoke out of cylinders three and four. Um, and that is not, that's not unburnt diesel, that is oil.
you might be able to see it's on that piece of steel I've just got wedged in to stop it spraying all over the all over the engine department. There is an awful lot of oil being thrown out the side of those you know, port, the rear ports there. Um, it's not at all good, and it is just three and four. Now these um, cylinders three and four are directly in line with the uh, inlet from the turbo. So if they were going to get a beating from any of the uh, rubbish that's come out of the compressor, it's going to be those two cylinders. So I'm not so sure what's happened here. Um, I'm fairly convinced it's going to be something horrible and catastrophic. Um, whether it's going to be valve train damage, unlikely. That would just give me kind of like a hissy sput kind of noise when you when it's running. Um, it wouldn't explain all the oil unless the valve guides have been eaten as well. Um, if it's so, it's either valve guides leaking oil badly, or um, potentially the uh, piston rings, ring lands, um, scored bore, something horrible along those lines. If uh, the turbo parts have managed to make their way in there. So, yeah, not great. Um, I now have a nice shiny rebuilt turbo, but I'm certainly not going to put that on the side of that engine in that condition. So, uh, we've got to see what happens. The next job is to rip the heads off. Um, I'm not going to have to, uh, time to do that this weekend. I've got some other bits and pieces I need to do. Um, so, it's going to be mothballed for the moment until I can get a spare five minutes to have a go at it. Um, but, yeah, uh, beware, be warned if the turbo lets go because there's no intercooler in the way. Anything that was in the compressor housing that is no lot that is free to move about is going to end up going straight into or through the engine, and in this case, it looks like it's uh, had a damn good go at cylinders three and four. So it's a real shame, really. That engine was in good nick, even though it had done two hundred eighty thousand miles. It's uh, it's in a bit of a state. Um, I'll carry on making the videos as I kind of pull things apart to see what's going on. But uh, yeah, it's a real shame. Um, I was I had uh, hopes to get that to three hundred thousand, but. It obviously wasn't to be.